I want to use for a subject in your hearing tomorrow everybody say tomorrow God bless you you may be seated we are literally witnessing the destruction or the destructive results of sin and a fallen humanity. This world seems to be hopelessly spiraling out of control to its final implosion. Everything is collapsing. This is what the Christian theologians call the depravity of man. Depravity is a term that says human nature is corrupt and evil, which is why we need to be born again to attain a new nature that is righteous and holy. Simply stated, people are evil and eviler by nature. What we see happening today is not just a reminder of the effects of sin, but proof of the effects of sin. David said in Psalm 51 verse five, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Yes, the world has been corrupted since the fall of man in Genesis. Just this week, I read an article that said here in America, 12 major cities have set new records in the number of homicides in 2021. How many people saw that? 12. And each homicide and with each act of violence, the level of trauma that is in, impacting people cannot even be calculated. Trauma really ought to be considered a pandemic. Unfortunately, five of these cities that broke homicide records, five of them broke records they set in 2020. Even worse, there are still three weeks left in the year. The cities include Columbus, Toledo, in addition to the already dangerous cities of Cincinnati and Cleveland. Homicides are up everywhere. Albuquerque, Austin, Baton Rouge, Indianapolis, Louisville, Portland, Rochester, St. Paul, Tucson, not to mention Atlanta, Baltimore, Chicago, Detroit, Kansas City, Las Vegas, Memphis, Milwaukee, New Orleans, Oakland, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, and Tulsa. Things were bad. They went from bad to worse. They, they've, they've gone from worse to worser. From worser to worsest. And now we're at worsest ever. The violence of the new cycle is numbing. Have you ever watched the news and just had to turn it off? This week, just... Speechless, dumbfounded, heartbroken, mad, angry, confused at how bad, how ridiculously bad and dangerous things are. It ought to drive the whole world to Jesus. You, you would think that it ought to make Christians feel uh, more aggressive where it is uh, where our desire is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I want you to write this down. 
The Christian church community must wake up and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ like never before. Right? We, we, we got to wake up. We, we, are, we are just too comfortable. While people are being shot all around us, while violence is happening in our streets, in our neighborhoods, and we are just chilling. But we have the best good news ever. Everybody's asking for answers and for solutions. Hello? Jesus is the answer. Ah, uh, 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 Paul wrote, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Do you believe in Jesus? Everybody ask that question out loud. Do you believe in Jesus? Have you accepted Jesus? Is he Lord of your life? Oh, that's a good conversation to have. And, and saints, we got to do it. We got we to say like Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. That, 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 that murderer needs to hear the gospel and maybe when they hear the gospel, they will put down their guns as the Holy Ghost leads them to. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and 5 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. In other words, as Bad as things get, we ought to do more church and not less church. More prayer, not less. More revivals, not fewer. More outreach, not less outreach. As we see the day approaching, I need somebody to help me preach and just say, I see the day approaching. In today's sermon, we're going to see just how quickly God can turn things around. Because I'm talking to somebody that came in overwhelmed by what you are seeing, overwhelmed by what you are hearing, overwhelmed by what you feel. And I want you to know that if you need God to turn things around, you're in the right place. Because we serve a God who is not intimidated by how bad things are. The Lord is not sitting up in glory saying, oh man, it's really bad. I don't think I can save anybody else. The Lord is not saying I can't, I can't make a difference in anybody else's life. The Lord is not saying that, and, and in this text, we're going to be able to see just how quickly and how substantially God can turn things around whenever he chooses to do so. Let, let, me, let me do some work here because in our text we see uh, that uh, the king here uh, is a man by the name of King Ben-Hadad. And he launches what was called a siege against Samaria and the siege caused the famine. The famine did not exist because there was no rain. This was not a famine that God ordered. This famine existed because when they surrounded the city 
when they surrounded the city, they said nothing's going in and nothing's coming out. So eventually, they ran out of food. And when they ran out of food, things got really crazy. The king decided that Elisha was to blame. So the king said, I'm going to kill Elisha. Uh, but before he got to Elisha, the word of God got to him. And Elisha said, in the face of starvation, in the face of death, in the face of desperation, Elisha said, by this time tomorrow, barley and meal will be sold for cheap prices at the city gate. It didn't look like it was going to happen. Uh, meanwhile, four leprous men sitting in the city gate decided they didn't have nothing to lose. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go to the city, we're going to die. If we go to the Syrians, we're going to die. So if either way you go, we're going to die. We might as well die trying. They said, we're going to try to live. I feel like I'm talking to somebody right now who is here, and you've decided, I'm going to try to live. I should give up. I should give in. I've lost everything, but I decided I'm not going out like that. Somebody just help me preach and say, I ain't going out like that. I'm not just going to sit here and go out. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm a, and they said to themselves, we're going to go to the Syrians. That idea, that was a God idea. That was a God idea because God knew nobody else would do that. Uh, so God put in their heart the courage to go to the Syrian camp. And when they got to the Syrian camp, I'm sure they had imagined that they were going to have to say, yes, we're very hungry. Would you please give us something? But the closer they got to the Syrian camp, they noticed, Brother Will, it was quiet up in there. It was early in the morning, so maybe they were sleeping and they, they got a little bit closer and they didn't see anybody. And they got a little bit closer and Still no Syrians. And that, but, but they saw all their food there. And they saw all the horses. They didn't even have enough horses in Samaria to send out and see what was going on. Come on, Sunday school students. All these horses, all this food, and they started eating like rolling. <laughs> They were starving. They were, just, they were just eating. They were eating and drinking and food was all running down the side of their face. They couldn't, they couldn't even talk. Oh, I'm starving. And then one of them said to the other, you know this ain't right. We eating and the whole city back there starving to death. So they, they, they said, oh, okay. What are you saying? I'm going to come to the you ever ate hungry? You ain't think about no manners. I'm talking about real hungry. Anybody ever been real hungry? Hungry? Anybody ever been hungry? They were hungry, Sister Jill. They were, they were hungry. They were just eating, just, just food everywhere. Finally, they said, all right, we're going to go back and tell them. And they went back and told them. They said, nah, we don't believe you, man. There's no way the Syrian army that had surrounded the city probably for weeks, because it takes weeks to run out of food. There's no way they just gonna leave everything, but God had done something. Uh, God had caused them to hear some chariots and some horses. The same chariots and horses that Elisha's servant had seen, but, but God told them to move. And when they moved, the, the Syrians heard the sound and, and they realized, oh, 
Somehow they hired somebody that's going to outnumber us. So they ran away. I want you to write this down. When God says things are going to get better, believe him. Somebody say believe him. See, see, the man of God was aware of the siege. Uh, he was aware of what was going on. He knew his life was in danger. He knew that the city had been reduced to starvation. He knew that they were paying $28 for a donkey's head and $3 for dove dung. That's hard time. And so when he said, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be buying wheat for $1.50 and, 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 and bushels of barley for 75 cents, it sounded uh, impossible. There is no way. I'm talking to somebody and I need you to hear me. Because as I'm talking in your spirit, I want you to know that God can turn what you are going through around. I want you to know that God can reverse your fortune. God can flip it in your favor. God can switch it around. God can change the mind. God can undo the damage. God can cancel what the enemy has planned for you. If you believe it, put your hands together and shout hallelujah. God will flip it. I want you to write this down because like Elisha, the saints get to make bold predictions of miraculously better days. Uh, let me give you a hint. Before you go around just saying any old thing, I want you to know the best way to make a bold prediction is to say what he said do. Yeah, yeah, the best way to make a bold prediction is to do what he said do and to not do what he said don't do. If you do that, you're going to be all right. I'm reminded of the words of Numbers chapter 23, verse number 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He hath said, and shall it not, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? God will make that thing good. I feel like prophesying to somebody, even when things seem desperately bad, even when things are desperately bad, I want you to know that God is able. Hallelujah. David said the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Ah, the broken and a contrite heart, oh God, thou wilt not despise when you go to God right you can make a bold prediction God's not going to turn me away ah, Jeremiah said for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wound saith the Lord because they called uh, they call thee an outcast saying this is Zion whom no man seeketh after I want you to know you can make a bold prediction I'll let you know when I'm ready I'm going to be a long while before I'm ready. He said, when you, when you want to make a bold prediction of a health, you can look at that scripture and say, God's going to heal me. The doctor may say, I ain't nothing I can do. The doctor may say, well, it's too far gone. The doctor may say, well, uh, there's, no, there's no cure for that. And you can say, there may not be a cure with you. But according to my word, God said he will restore my health. I'm looking at some folk whose health is being restored right now. The surgery was a success because God is going to restore your health. Hmm. 
Uh, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, but I am come that they might have life. You want to make a bold prediction? Just shout, I will live. I will have life. I will have abundant life. Come on, somebody. Make some bold predictions about your future. Write this down. There must be a new tone from the church the rest of 2021. Everybody say a new message. Everybody say a new tone. A new tone all together. We've got to change our tone. Uh, we must be bold enough to be positive. Bold enough to be encouraging. Don't walk in your job. It's just another day. Oh, I hope we don't get laid off today. No, change your tone. God will take care of me. God's going to work this thing out. How do you feel? I may not feel the best, but I know that God's still able to heal my body. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Be bold enough to be hopeful in a hopeless situation. Write this down. How a person feels about their future can be a determining factor of their future. I, I need you to feel good about your future. Everybody just say, I feel better. You may not feel better physically, but feel better about your future. Uh, I, I was concerned, but now I feel better. Why? Because I know God's going to work some things out. In business, this is called the expectancy theory, which means better efforts will result in better performance and better results. For us, it is the faith that God gives us that he will intervene. Doubt lacks that faith when there is doubt you think well God may not intervene but when you expect God to intervene it shows up on your face it show hey glory it shows up in your voice it shows up in your walk because I'm not we walk like we're walking to the death chamber dead man walking dead woman walking no i'm not a dead man walking i've got jesus in my life i'm not walking to my death i'm walking to my praise party come on somebody pick it up and give god some praise we gotta learn we gotta learn we gotta learn Everybody say we got to learn. Everybody say we got to learn. We got we to learn who's with us. Uh, faith in God is never pointless. Faith in God is never useless. Faith in God it's never unfortunate. It's always appropriate to believe in God. And it's always appropriate to trust in him. Let's write this down. Some blessings seem like they are accidental. Some blessings seem like they are coincidence. Or even luck. But they're actually precisely pre-planned provisions of God. God planned on delivering you. God planned on working for you. God planned on healing your body. God planned on blessing your family. God planned on bl blessing your finances. And it's not too late for God to turn your situation around. As a matter of fact, God can take you from being homeless to being in a home. 
Can I get one witness? The God I serve can take you from being carless to having reliable transportation. Can I get one witness? The God I serve can take you from being alone and surround you with saved friends. Can I get one witness? The God I serve can take you from being jobless to giving you the job of your dreams. The God I serve can take you from being scared and make you happy. He can change your sickly situation and cause you to feel good. God can take you from being broken and make you whole. God will change you from being needy to having a surplus. And he can do it by this time tomorrow. Now, before I close this sermon, I need to be clear. When I talk about tomorrow about this time, I'm not talking about a 24-hour miracle. Although that may be what God's going to do for somebody. I'm not even talking about a specific date on the calendar. I'm speaking those things that are not as though they were. Tomorrow to me is a future. Tomorrow is a vision. Tomorrow is an outlook. Tomorrow is a prospect. Tomorrow is the life to come. Tomorrow is the next season of your life. Tomorrow is by and by. Tomorrow is indefinite. So to me, the words by this time tomorrow is about hope. It's about deliverance. It's about recovery. It's about closure. It's about a sudden transfer of wealth. It's about shifts. It's about transformations. It's about a metamorphosis. It's about a renewal from certain death. Somebody say break it down. Ah, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. By this time next week, by this time next month, by this time next year, God can turn your whole situation around. Somebody say, turn it around, Lord. 